or whatever that may mean. And my mantra is one of uh, live a modest life, uh, put your money back, invest wisely, and then look up and you'll be wealthy. And wealthy is defined as a lot of money, a lot more money than you're going to have making even $100,000 a year. Next slide. This is an actionable plan, next slide, from a shy high school graduate. That's me right there. <laughs> Senior prom. Am I a darling or what? Look at that. That's pathetic. It's really sad, isn't it? I'm just like y'all. I was just like y'all. I promise you. I was dumb as a brick. The girls didn't like me. I was shy. N nobody would have ever guessed that I was going to be the one. I was not a quarterback on the football team. I, wasn't, I didn't take anybody to the prom that was special. I was just a, a regular person. Next slide. Child Protective Services took me away from my mom. I have a twin brother for abuse uh, in, uh, when I was around uh, 15 years old, about the age of y'all. And at age 17, when I was a senior in high school, my dad died, leaving me with no money and no place to live. So it doesn't get a whole lot closer to the bottom than that. I was a Safeway bag boy. Uh, Safeway's not here anymore. In 1972, I made $1.60 an hour. $1.60 an hour. Okay. I went on to be assistant, assistant produce manager in 73, making two ten an hour. So that was a pretty big raise. And, but a new car then was $2,500. So, you know, there's, everything's a little bit relative. It, it sounds so meager, and yet, I mean, it's pretty exciting to think you might buy a new car for $2,500. Uh, I, I rented a mobile home, and I opened a Volkswagen repair shop. My dad had left me a 65 Volkswagen Bug. Very few of you know what a Volkswagen Bug is or know much about Volkswagen Bugs, although they are kind of timeless. When you think of a Volkswagen Bug, you probably think of a hippie. And by the way, I went to Burning Man last year, so you know everybody here probably knows what Burning Man is. Next slide. I didn't get to college, just a little bit. Chased girls, played pool, went to junior college. Didn't have any money. I was high energy, I had a low version of risk. And in 1980, I started a junkyard. Who knows what a junkyard is? Good, tell me. What's a junkyard? That's right. We take cars and we sell parts off of them. And back then there was a lot of retail business. Today there's not any retail business. Nobody in this room's ever probably ever even worked on their car hardly. And back then everybody worked on their car. But uh, now, it's not to be mixed up with a scrap yard, which buys scrap metal and then sells the metal. Here, we buy cars and we sell parts. Uh, the auto recycling business, as it's referred to today, is a really big business. There's one public company that's a Fortune 500 company with $10 billion in sales and thousands more recyclers that aren't part of that company. So it's a lot bigger business than you think. In 1986, I was one of the first to computerize, and I grew to 150 employees, 15 million in sales, with six locations, and in 1999, I sold out to Ford Motor Company for $14.1 million, which was, again, a lot of money in 99. In the first two years, they lost $250 million, that's a quarter billion dollars, in the auto salvage business. It was not a good fit for them. Next slide. Uh, they came back to me and said, Ron, this was not a good fit. You were the largest acquisition we made. We'd like to sell you the company back. By then, they had uh, 26 locations in 15 states, 1,000 employees, and $140 million in sales, losing a million dollars a month. Uh, I bought it from them, made the business profitable in 18 months. Uh, I wrote my first book. Now, I brought some books. Where did we put all the books? Okay. Okay, so got a bunch of books here we're going to give out different topics. My first book was called How to Salvage Millions from Your Small Business. Because everybody I knew came to me and said, Ron, you know, how did you do that? 
in, in such a little known, little known, little thought of business, the junkyard business. I mean, you kids aren't really thinking about junkyard businesses as being, as a matter of fact, my nephew, uh, as, and he was in an entrepreneur class and uh, in his senior year, and everybody was charged with, what kind of business do you want to open? Write us a two page paper, you know, some fundamentals, a little bit of math, why do you think this is viable, so on and so on. And, uh, and you had to interview two people that were in that business, one that had done well and one that had not done well. Uh, and so all the kids submitted their papers. He wanted to open a junkyard. Teacher gave it back to him and told him that was not a viable business. <laughs> and that's, that, it's kind of funny, but you, re, you guys are not really thinking about junkyards for making money. But everybody I knew, you know, the people that put chemicals in my swimming pool said, Ron, you had a junkyard and you sold that for $14 million? We need, to, we need you to tell us something here. What are we missing, okay? Uh, after I sold out uh, and bought it back, then I opened a salvage auto auction, and then I sold that to a public company. Next slide. I sold my businesses to the Fortune 500 company. I wrote eight more books. I started a chain of salons. Today I have 22 locations in Tarrant County and 500 stylists. The girls in the room probably know because they go somewhere where there's, your stylist has a little suite and they work in a room and they fix your hair. And COVID has helped our business because people don't want to be in a wide open area having their hair fixed anymore. They want to be in a room. So uh, we have 22 locations in Tarrant County, 2 million square feet of real estate, 14 employees, 125 million in commercial properties, and 1,600 people paying me rent every month. Next slide. I was recently featured on CNBC Blue Collar Millionaire. And for those of you that like old cars, I was also on American Pickers this, just recently, a few months back. I received a Lifetime Achievement Award for sharing, speaking, and innovating. And what was just last month was the 2022 finalist for the Entrepreneur of Excellence Awards in Fort Worth. Needless to say, I'm an overachiever. Next slide. I framed the whole pr uh, presentation by understanding that you have to be happy with, the, with your work balance. Some of you want to have babies and want to stay at home and, and you don't want to work that much. Others of you want to work a lot. Uh, some of you want to wait to have babies. Uh, the guys want to do this, they want to do that. So understand that my mantra isn't about not working very hard. And if you want to not work very hard, I think it's wonderful. I'm all for it. I'm supportive of it. Just don't bitch because you don't have any money. That's all I ask. I'm very supportive of you going to the hockey games and only working 22 hours a week and, and living off the fat of the land. And, uh, you know, I don't know which is worse for a parent or a teacher and that either to have uh, a kid that wants nothing or a kid that wants everything my good investor friend, he pulled up in front of my place the other day, driving a Scion, and I said, Bruce, Bruce, what are you doing driving a Scion? You're usually in a BMW. And he said, well, I went to Austin and got my daughter's car. She's living with a musician, and they're just smoking dope and living off the fat of the land. I said, you know, I think that's worse than, than being overachieving. I don't know, you know, they're very different. So I'm, I'm supportive of that. What is the definition of wealth? Today, I believe it's $10 million in net worth, okay? A millionaire is nothing nowadays. You can be a millionaire. Uh, uh, Dave's probably a millionaire. He's a school teacher, okay? So it doesn't take a whole lot to be a millionaire. Not to demean being a millionaire, Dave. Next slide. And a word about greed. You don't have to be greedy. You don't have to feel greedy and don't let other people shame you into being greedy because you want to be an overachiever and you want money. That is to say though, I tip 50% in a restaurant. Those people work really hard and it makes me feel good to tip 50%. I'll probably never go there again in a lot of cases, but they work really hard. And uh, I believe that you can be generous with people around you while still being frugal in your lifestyle. You're not going to get rich by not valet parking, 
Okay, you cannot valet park your whole life, and I promise you, you won't be any richer. So, it's okay to uh, to be frugal. Next, these are some of the books: How to Salvage Millions. Next. Green Weenies and Due Diligence. This is a book about, I brought a few of them, not very many though, uh, business jargon that I learned when I was at Ford Motor Company, which is funny business terms. Next. Getting to Yes with Your Banker. I brought two boxes of this book because I think it's really right on point for you kids because uh, without credit, you're not gonna get here. You're just not going to get here. And so this book will teach you how to uh, make more loans. Uh, next book, uh, peer benchmarking, which you may or may not have heard the term benchmarking. Y'all benchmark here, probably on a curve, maybe, but if he makes a 90 and you make an 88 and you make a 70, then everybody's 70. Then that's the benchmark, okay? The 98 is better than the 70, and the 70 sets the standard for the curve. Next, or the delta. How to salvage more millions, which was the same book with a lot more chapters in it. Next slide. Low cost events. Uh, my girlfriend had a state farm agency and they want them to have events, but they don't tell them how to have them. And so uh, we wrote this book about how to have events for your small business. Next. This information is not for you if you have an aversion to debt. There's nothing wrong with being debt free. And some of you are going to have parents that say, oh my God, you can't borrow money. You've got to be debt free. Get it? Don't have any problem with that. Is anybody in the room rich yet, other than Dave? Don't think so. Anybody plan on being rich next year? Who's got enough money to start a business? I don't see all the hands flying up. I think most of the people in the room are pretty broke, what do you think? You agree? That, did you say you agree? So, let's, let's just clear the air. Everybody in the room's broke, so the only way you're gonna get ahead is to borrow some money from somebody. It doesn't mean you shouldn't save some money to go with the money you borrow from somebody, but the point is you can't get way ahead in life with only what you can make. You gotta have other people helping you with their money. <coughs> it's not for you if you don't wanna be a multimillionaire. You can be a millionaire having a nice career, three bedroom brick home, two babies, a new car every other year, and you can retire with a million bucks, okay? Nothing wrong with that. Some of you want more than a million bucks. You think today a million might be enough, but trust me, it's not. And if you don't like to read, boys don't like to read as much as girls, but you can't get here without reading. I didn't go to college. I'm completely self-taught. But if you read a book on marketing, well, no, let's get, we'll get to that in a slide in a minute. Next. Can't get here. This, this presentation is not for you if you want to get rich quick. I buy a lottery ticket. Actually, when I buy a lottery ticket at the gas station, I give the girl $20 and I tell her, let's be partners, buy $20, 20 tickets, tomorrow when I'm here, tell me whether we want or not and we'll split. Everybody at the convenience store loves me. And I always get screwed. Never I get $3 the next time I'm there or whatever. But you're not gonna get rich quick. Uh, if you wanna retire with a million, nothing wrong with that. And this is not for you if you think real estate investments are risky. A little side note here, we are in the best place in America for real estate. Real estate's still cheap here, uh, and it's continuing to go up, and we're so blessed because so many people are moving here, and there's so much commerce and so much money. Next slide. It's not for you if you want to invest in the stock market. There's nothing wrong with that. Of course, the market goes up and the market goes down. You'll make 47%. It's not for you if you can't maintain good credit. If you gotta, if you gotta jump out there, open an Amazon account, buy the biggest new boom box, and then not pay the bill, sorry. It's not gonna work. And if you're not ready to work hard. Next slide. So these are some of the new slides. Oh my God, where do I start? I can barely do get my homework done and you want me to think about being wealthy? I need gas money. Okay. I'm not here thinking about being wealthy. I just need some freaking gas money. You came to the wrong classroom, Ron. 
if you can get to college, go. I couldn't, but if I could, could have, I would have, and I would have been smarter had I. Not so sure about that, but college is good if you can get there. Next. By the way, I went to TCJC, I was telling them coming in, $12 an hour. $12 per student hour. I wonder how much it is today for the junior college. It's 100 and something probably, right? Where do I start? I've kind of put this in a little bit of an order. Get your butt to work. Okay. Which pile stinks the least? Okay. Every job stinks. You gotta find the one that stinks the least. One of them stinks less than all the rest of them. And it's not about the money. I always laugh because what you make won't buy jack shit. Okay. What you learn is to get along with an unruly boss, and what you learn is to get out of bed on Saturday morning when you didn't want to get out of bed and go to work. What you learn is how to get along with other people, because you're going to have idiots, fools, everything you can imagine around you, and you have to learn to get along with that, because the, get ready for life, kids, that's the way it's going to be. We're going to be surrounded by idiots and stupid people and all kinds of things. None of it's going to come together without a strong ethic. Are you really ready for this? You're not going to win the lottery. Figure working 50 hours a week for 25 years. 50 hours a week. You know, I laugh. I tell people I'm cutting my hours. I'm cutting my hours to 50, okay? I'm just working 10 hours a day, Monday through Friday nowadays. I do love what I do, though. And I do travel a whole lot, two weeks out of every month. But when I'm at home, I have to put six pounds of crap in a three pound bag. Because there's a lot to do. You gotta be very competitive. You gotta wanna win. You gotta wanna be the best fry cook. The best bag boy. You gotta be better than everybody at everything you come in contact. For me, it's search engine optimization at one point. I wanna beat Google's ass, okay? You gotta be competitive. You gotta wanna do this. It's gotta be exciting for you. You can be the best bad boy or the, or the line cook. Next. Learn to save the insignificant nickels and dimes. Don't spend all of them. I know the boss sucks. The next boss will suck too. And the boss after him will probably suck. Maybe eventually you'll get a boss that won't suck. But most of them are gonna suck. Mark Twain once said, he went away from home for two years and when he came back, he couldn't believe how much his dad had changed. His dad never changed at all. He just went away for two years. And those bosses that you think suck are probably holding you accountable. And you're not used to being held accountable and you don't like that, so you think the boss sucks. The coworkers suck, the job sucks. Stay two hours, stay two years at your first job, it's important. No matter how bad it sucks, unless they're abusing you, stay two years. Obsess over entrepreneurial books. You can't read too many. Next, credit, 70% of you are gonna lose it and it's gonna kill you for 10 years. I see it over and over and over, it sucks. I see it in, when I'm hiring people, the first 10 years of their life are lost. They can't buy a car, they can't get an apartment. All kinds of bad things happen when you don't have credit. It's not even about being able to start a business. It's about being able to just buy a decent car or rent an apartment without your credit. I encourage you to get some credit. I just want you to pay it off. Be modest about the way you use it. Pull your credit report today. You need a score of 720 or higher. Most of you have never seen your credit report. And it probably, probably doesn't have anything in it. You're kind of blessed because when you're young like you are, your credit score will probably be pretty high. Without good credit, you're screwed. Read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I bought a few of them, but let's talk about money. We all want more. You must have a positive, ambitious attitude. If you're always negative, if you're always down in the mouth, you're not going to get ahead. No room for drama or negativity. Read The Millionaire Mind by T.R. Ecker, another book for you to read. Millionaires think differently than regular people. 
Where you see a challenge, they see an opportunity. I love this book. It's all about how you should think if you want to be rich. Next. It's a noisy world out there. Why should one notice you? What makes you different? Well, you're different because you're the best line cook. You're the best kid we got. Give him more hours. Let him lead the line cooks, okay? If you're just gonna come to work and check in and check out, be mad most of the time because you wish you weren't here, not gonna work. You're not gonna get where you want in life. Learn to talk about your successes without being snooty or boisterous. Trump is the best about this. But nobody else is going to talk about what a great person you are. So you better learn to talk about yourself at an appropriate time. You can't be pompous. But nobody else is going to promote you. You have to promote yourself. What is your claim to fame? or unique selling proposition. What makes you different? And I gave a really simple example. You can be the best line cook. Next slide. Take every math class you can take. You, you've got to be good at math. Now, I know Dave wants us to learn the periodic table. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Probably not going to use it again in your life. But. And you probably won't use very much trig, but it's still helpful. And I got some algebra and a little bit of math, but I am really good at math in my head, okay? And I brought my math test. They've made copies. If we have time, we're gonna hand this out because this is what I give applicants. Little short, real easy math test. Real easy. Did you look at it, Dave? Pretty damn easy, right? So, but if you apply for work at my business, that will be the first test you take. Get organized. Use your phone and your calendar. Now I have some, my girlfriend has some kids that, well, they're older than y'all, but I had, I was around when they were your age. And they don't use their phone for anything except texting. They don't have any contacts in their phone, hardly ever. They never use their calendar. And they don't have, and they don't use email. Oh, we use Facebook, we use instant message, we use Instagram, we use whatever. The rest of the world uses email, okay? I'm not proposing that you try to talk to every one of your colleagues with email, but you need to have an email address. It needs to come to your phone, and you need to learn to use it. And as you go out into the work world, you're going to find that it's valuable. And do you have a business card? I won't ask who has one because I don't want everybody to feel embarrassed. Every one of you should have a business card. You are you, okay? Put something stupid on it, you know? Chief entrepreneur or best drag racer ever. I don't care. Oh, you have one, a business card. The girls will be impressed too, guys. Pay attention to this. The girls will be impressed if you have a business card. Okay. You can print them on your printer. They cost almost nothing, and it's so important. Go home and tell your parents you printed some business cards. It's like, what? What do you mean you printed a business card? Oh yeah, we had a speaker today. He told us we need to have a business card. So I have one now. You know, they're, they'll be impressed, I promise. It's good. Everybody you meet, give them a business card. Ask them if they have a business card. If you work for me and you're not naked in the shower, you better have a business card on you. Okay? If you come in contact with somebody, you better be ready to give them your business card. You never know who you're gonna meet in this world that will help you later. I read two bucks a, books a month for 20 years. So in one year, you will have read 24 books. I'm not talking about school books. I'm talking about books about uh, marketing, business planning, finance, leadership, how to persevere, how to have a good attitude, how to get along with others. All those books are out there. <clears throat> and they're, they're easy reads. And, you, and if, you read all of the, if you read those 24 books in one year, when you go to college, you'll be snooting at the other people because you'll already know half the stuff they're going to teach you in the first year. Email me, I'll send you a list to get it started on. One thing I've noticed different about this class than the college class and the 
business people that I speak to. I haven't seen a pencil move. Okay. I'm guessing maybe next time y'all have a speaker, there'll be a pencil moving. Okay. If I want to give you my address, are you ready to write it down? Okay. I've given you lessons so far. Should have written just a brief note, just something to look at later. Be the person everyone can count on. The best line cook is always here. Five minutes early. He doesn't come through the door one minute before he's supposed to be here, punch the clock, and go straight in the toilet. Okay? Have a mantra, a mantra of constant development. You're constantly improving yourself. Be technologically savvy. This is easy for the girls. The guys don't seem quite as good at it. But you have to be able to, you think because you can look something on, up on Google, you're technologically savvy. No. Read some books on the topic. Learn to talk up as well as down. What does that mean? Well, sometimes you have to talk to Dave here. Dave's an up, okay? He's kind of the boss, okay? You're kind of the boss, okay? Down will be the line cook that works below you at the restaurant that you're doing so well. And you have to be able to talk to both people and you have to have authority and know how to speak. And they're different. They're very different people and the way you speak to them has to be very different. Promise, if you talk to Dave like a line cook, not gonna be good. Next. A word about collaboration and network building. You can't do this on your own. You cannot be a successful entrepreneur in a vacuum. You've gotta <clears throat> surround yourself with people that can do what you shouldn't do, won't do, can't do, and you don't have enough resources. You got, you're gonna have to borrow money, so there's one thing you're gonna need. And you know, it's funny how when you're successful, your, your friends are like, oh, that's my friend, she's successful, you know. Oh yeah, she's 20, she already opened her own business. You need people that are real supportive of what you're doing, and you need to be supportive of other people but you have to build a network. Every enemy you create is one more person that won't be helping you be rich. Next. You won't work for me or most others if you can't use Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Y'all teach any of that? Yeah. All three of them? Uh, yes. And, because when we hire people, they say, well, I'm kind of rusty on Excel and they can't build a three sales spreadsheet. So there's plenty of places to learn those skills if you don't learn them here. And by the way, most of you probably don't want to be a line cook, although that may be all you're qualified for at this point in your life, and it's going to suck, but get to it. But if you want something a little better, then make sure you can use these software programs, and you might land a job in a doctor's office doing filing. Find a mentor. That's somebody that'll help you with advice, but they're probably gonna be really hard on you. They're gonna tell you, well, you screwed that up, go do this. Time is your enemy, don't procrastinate. Not enough time, next. I'm a voracious, re voracious, voracious reader, and I read the Wall Street Journal every day till about three years ago. My eyes have gotten bad and it's hard to read all of it. And I don't read it end to end, I read pretty much everything on the front page and then there'll be a few items that are of interest. You won't believe how much your vocabulary will expand when you read the articles. And you won't believe how much your understanding of business expands. What's happening in the business world. And uh, surprise your parents, Wall Street Journal subscriptions are pretty expensive. Uh, surprise your parents and ask for a one-year subscription for next year for Christmas. They'll like that, okay? Like 200 bucks for a year. You gotta, you gotta work hard and have passion. You gotta keep swinging the pig. I talked to a dad my age here recently and his daughter came home. She said, I quit the skating rink this morning. I've worked at, she's 22. I've worked Saturdays all my life. You gotta, you're gonna have to work Saturdays. Just be ready for it. Develop strategic and leadership skills and learn financial statements. But there are books you can read that will help you learn financial statements. Successful people make lots of lists. 
learn more about the word, another book, Google for Dummies. You have to think big to do big. And you have to recognize your strengths and weaknesses. My weakness is that I'm too direct. Sometimes I'm not as politically correct as I should be. I get right to the point. It doesn't work very good with girls, by the way. But my strongest strength is that I'm very direct. Business people love it. They want, and even employees love it. They want to know right where they're at. I'm always fair. I'm always disclosive. I'm always honest. My employees love me because I don't play any games with them. You have to have a reasonably low aversion to risk. If you're one of those people that thinks the world's going to end tomorrow, you're probably not going to benefit from this presentation. Surround yourself with talent. And my friends used to say that I'd do 100 ideas against the wall every year. I'd go away the week after Christmas and I'd read two or three books and I'd come home with pages and pages of new initiatives and new things, things we were going to try. And only a few of them would stick, but the ones that stuck were humdingers. And most people don't throw enough stuff against the wall. Okay. You have to be honest, fair, and, and, and to be an effective leader. Don't nickel and dime others. We talked about that. You can be frugal. Thanks. Don't try to win the lottery. There's no substitute for a sense of urgency. Do it today so you'll have time to do other things tomorrow. And you have to love what you do. Are you getting paid to have good credit? Now, you guys don't have hardly any credit yet. But at 21 or 22 or 23, I'm going to challenge you to buy your first home. Lots of new home buyer programs out there. You can buy a new home with three or four thousand dollars down. All your friends will be so jealous. They'll want to come over and party every Saturday night. Uh, and so, uh, but if you have really good credit, nobody's paying you for it. And the little, the little vignette I like to say is that make others pay you for having really good credit by loaning you money because they're looking for people with really good credit. Now you're getting rewarded for having really good credit. You don't have enough money. Start with your first 25,000. But with the first buy home buyer program, it could be 5,000. Now, that means you're going to have to save $5,000 by the time you're 22. That sounds kind of daunting, probably. But if you get with it, Get your first job, put back a little every week, it'll come quicker than you think. And you can't borrow money without a business plan. Read some books, lots of books on how to prepare a business plan. About those pesky business plans. You think that the business plan is for the person that you're gonna borrow money from. And that's not what the business plan's for at all. The business plan is for you. You have to put together a plan. How many widgets am I going to sell? In the first month, I'm only going to sell three. Then I'm going to sell five. Then I'm going to sell 100. Then I'm going to sell 200. You have to have a business plan to execute against. Because three months in, you want to look and say, well, did I do what I said I was going to do? And if you didn't, then you need to recalibrate. And your business plan was not as good as it should have been. My investment friends say there are lots of ideas. The world is awash in ideas for things that need to be invented, services that need to be provided. Uh, we recently hired a guy that poops the dog, uh, picks up the dog poop in our yard. You know, he said, he said, you know, I was just kind of thinking, well, what does nobody else want to do? I'm going to pick up dog poop. He has three trucks, six employees, and he's banking, picking up dog poop. Okay. Lots of people, <laughs> I know you're going to find this hard to believe, lots of people don't like picking up dog poop. So he created a, a, a business that met a need in the marketplace. That's what it's about. You've got to meet a need. There are lots of ideas. Money. There is more money in the world ready to be invested than you can possibly imagine. It's so available. There are very few people that can connect the dots. Okay, they have a proven ability to take some money, have an idea, build a business plan, connect the dots, and make a, make a business out of it. A 
okay? And the dog poop guy's a really good example of it. He's only been in business like two years. Uh, Y'all are gonna say, oh my God, all I need is money. I get it. I hear it over and over and over from business people that are trying to grow their businesses or whatever. Usually they need money because they're losing money and they need to restock their capital. Nothing wrong with needing money. Be prepared to put 50% equity in. You wanna borrow 5,000? Make sure you have five. By the way, you could start that dog poop company with $10,000, an old Chevrolet pickup, some plastic bags, a little uniform. You'd be, you'd be a baller. Uh, all I need is money. Plan on at least 50% equity. You can't build a business plan you likely can't execute as you have nothing to execute against. Even if you want to borrow the money from your parents, another business that's so easy to get into, and I see so many people trying it. Some people do it better than others. Mowing grass. There's a real need for landscaping. Landscaping. And I know a lot of people that started, they just mowed grass. And then they had one person working with them mowing grass. And then two people mowing grass. And then they had three people. Then they hired a secretary. <coughs> now they've got 12 people and they're not mowing grass anymore. Okay. And they, they built a business that's making several million dollars a year mowing grass. It's such an easy business to get in. I encourage you to consider it actually. Uh, but nobody's going to give you money if you don't have a business plan. How many yards are you going to mow in the first week, in the second week, in the third week, in the second month, the third month? And what are your expenses going to look like? It's, it's a, to me, it's fun. I want, to be, I want to sit down and think, okay, so how many gallons of gas will I use for the lawnmower? How often will I have to change the blade? You know, these are questions that you need to be able to answer. If you just say, oh, I'll buy a lawnmower and mow grass, this is gonna be okay. I'm not sure that's gonna work. And working through the machinations of understanding the income and the expenses is a really, really healthy exercise. And, and then get somebody, maybe, maybe your worst naysayer, I don't know, is it, is it your dad or who is it? Get them to look at the business plan and say, well, that's, that's crap. You can't possibly mow 18 yards a day. You know, you need somebody to poo-poo the plan to make it realistic. By the way, I see some people using their calculators now, which is as good as a pencil moving. Uh, no one's gonna loan or invest in an idea, except maybe family, without a plan. Surround yourself with people smarter than you, don't scrap on financial health and bookkeeping. Don't fret or concern yourself with things you can't change and you can't have distractions. You can't have DUIs, you can't have divorce, you can't have unplanned babies, you can't have any of that drama. It will distract you and you will not be successful. Next, live a modest lifestyle. I lived in a mobile home for the first 15 years. I had three little boys. The youngest was five. But on Sunday, we went down to the junkyard and we sold parts until we got the $100 we needed to get groceries for the next week. And of course, you couldn't buy groceries for $100 now. But, and sometimes we'd get $100 in the first two hours. Other time, we had to stay all day long. Of course, the kids swept and played games or whatever. But it's a really good example of how this is not easy. I did usually have nice cars for the most part. The crossroads of life, you won't have many chances. In several of my books, I talk about this at great length. You'll probably have about five times in your life where if you make the right decision, it will catapult you to the next level. It may be a little inheritance. Uh, it could be, could be an automobile accident where you get $50,000 in damages, okay? It won't always be financial. Your uncle may offer you a position in his company starting at the bottom, but agreeing to let you move up through the company. If you say no to that, you may miss one of the five times in your life where you could have catapulted to the next level. Don't worry about taxes. 
Taxes suck. It's funny how you'll figure out a way not to pay them most of the time. <laughs> you'll figure out how to manage the taxes. Somebody will help you with that. You can't make everything perfect. If you're one of those, what's it called, obsessive. Uh, Compulsive. Obsessive. OCD. OCD. Yeah. Hard to be successful in business like that. You have to tolerate some mediocrity, and if you try to make everything per perfect, then you spend a whole lot of time making everything perfect, but you don't get to try but a few things. While you're being obsessive, I'm going to do five things. Two of them aren't gonna work. Three of them are going to work. All of them with 80% efficacy or quality. 80% of them will be effective. And you can really get, it's called the Pareto rule, but you can get 80% of, of the results with 20% of the effort. Or 80% uh, of the problems will be caused by 20% of the customers, so on and so on. So you, you can either spend weeks and weeks and months and months to start getting the content right for the website, or you can get it almost right in 10 days. And almost right will, will allow you to launch the website months ahead of when you would have launched it, and that cycle will keep you ahead. Next. I like buying, I have commercial properties, but at one point I had 50 rent houses. Best tip I'm going to give you, buy the house under the starter loan program that you're going to live in. Live in it at least two days, and then go buy your second home and rent the first one. Not against the law, the government is there, they supported your loan, they gave you the low rate, and obviously, you, you, it'll take you more than two days to get the second house, but be prepared to move to the second house. By the way, when you move to the second house, there'll probably be another starter loan. At a minimum, if you say you're gonna live in it, you'll get a better interest rate. So now you got two homes. Live in the second home at least two days. Y'all getting the theme here? Okay. You just keep buying rent houses. I hear the same thing every time I do this. They say, oh my God, Ron, what am I gonna do when the tenants knock a hole in the wall? You're probably gonna fix it. And then you're gonna rent it. And for me, I wanted enough money out of the rent to make my loan payment, pay my taxes, and pay my expenses. And I didn't want a single dollar of profit. No profit at all. So if I get $1,500 a month in rent, and my payment's a thousand, and my taxes are two hundred, and my miscellaneous expenses are three hundred. At the end of the year, I haven't spent anything, I haven't made anything, and I've paid a portion of the the renter is paying my mortgage. That's what this is all about. You talk about having people help you. This tenant is helping you. They are paying for your mortgage. Multiply that times a lot of buildings and a lot of tenants, and first thing you know, it starts looking like real money. Now. Some of you will start as early as 22 or 23. Most of you won't. But if you start at 22 or 23 and you have 20 year mortgages, when you're 42, you'll have 30 something rent houses. Guys, the girls will love you. You'll really be a baller, okay? Girls, you won't have any trouble getting a boyfriend, but most of them will be freeloaders. But you'll have that mortgage paid and you'll have a lot of money coming in. You'll have $5 million in 15 years and $10 million in 30 years. There'll still be some debt left at the end of 30th year, but all the ones in the beginning will already be paid off. Next slide. You may have to look for owner finance, especially if you're young and if you're trying to go faster. And uh, never, ever, buy non-income producing properties. That's a property that you don't get any rent off of. All your friends are gonna say, oh my God, we got this two acre piece of land over here, it's right by the 7-Eleven. You know, it, it should be worth $10 a foot, but they're selling it for $2 a foot because the widow lady died. And <clears throat> never, never buy a piece of property that doesn't produce income. It'll suck you under, because now you have payments with nobody making your payments for you. Next slide. That's just the slide that shows number of houses, how, how much they add up with a 5% increase in value. 
Next slide. My friend Don Engelson used to say, coasting will only get you to one place, the bottom of the hill. No room for coasters. Next. Now some of you have paid a lot of attention here. Some of you came really excited. Some of you came because she told you you had to come. And you want to get a good grade, so you got to be here. You don't have to be super overachiever, superman, to beat the asses of everybody else here. Okay? And let me work through this math with you. Half of you aren't going to do anything. You're not really interested in being rich. You're more interested in playing pool or drinking a beer. Or, no, not drinking. You're not supposed to be drinking beer yet, right? <laughs> But half of you aren't going to do nothing. Okay, so how many people are here? 60? Uh, probably, yeah. There. 30 of you were just missing. Okay. It's okay. No judgment. It's okay. You just weren't ready yet. That leaves 30 of you that were going to say, you know, that guy talked about some pretty interesting stuff. I think I want to buy a few of those books and read them and see what I might be able to do and so on and so on. So half of the 30 will be somewhat interested. They might buy one or two books. That's 15 people. Of the 15 people that read the books, how many will prepare a plan? How many will sit down? Maybe you'll talk to your parents or you. You'll have an idea. You'll, you know, you're nurturing, you're overachieving, you're competitive. Maybe you're gonna do the dog poop thing or landscaping, I don't know. There's lots of simple businesses like those. Make sure they meet a need. That's 15. Okay, so half of you will think about a plan. Put, put a little something down on paper, read a few more books. Of the half of you that will put something down on a piece of paper and make a little plan, only half of you will really follow through. Really follow through. Actually start the business, go buy the bag, start going around <laughs> picking up poop, Whatever that means. So that means, uh, where did we get to? We were at 15, then we went to seven. We maybe even got to three, I'm not sure. It's either three or seven. Either three or seven of you are going to do something as a result of this presentation today. And the other 50 whatever are going to wait till later in life. Again, nothing wrong with that. You got to wait till you're ready. And you got to be willing to work hard. Next slide. Maybe the last one. Some more books. Secrets of the Millionaire Mind we talked about. Purple Cow is a marketing book, and you got to be a purple cow. Because you know, if you're riding down the road and you're looking at cows, pretty soon you fall asleep because cows all look the same, don't you? You need to find a purple cow. <laughs> purple cow is kind of exciting. First Break All the Rules and E Myth. E Myth is a really good book. I've got about half a dozen of them here, I think that will tell you how to dissect your own emotions and whether you're meant to be an entrepreneur or not, whether you're suited to it. Next slide. Remember, when you see someone driving a Lamborghini, I came in a McLaren today, but I have a Lamborghini, they likely don't work for a boss. Stop and think about that. That guy you saw at the 7-Eleven in the Lamborghini, does not have a boss, he works for himself. Very, very few people driving a Lamborghini work for somebody else. So make that your goal to buy a Lamborghini. You're gonna have to be a little wealthy to buy a Lamborghini. I think that may be the last one, isn't it? Okay, and what time is it? We're at 43. And how long do we have left? Seven more minutes for questions. Okay, so we won't take the math test. I'm going to encourage y'all to give the math test. The key is there and uh, I'll send you an email and kind of tell you how to, how to work through that and what it means. We have proven the math, I have proven the math test. In my, pay attention. I have proven, I'm pretty direct, aren't I? I have proven the math test empirically, meaning based on math. When, we hired, when I had the salvage yard company and we had sellers, we had 168 salespeople. The salespeople that can do good on the math 
And I'll tell y'all what good is. I don't want them to know yet. Always sell 50% more. Because their mind works faster. They're able to process things really quickly. They're able to handle two phones. The best salespeople always handle two or even three phones. And the average salesperson only had one phone. Okay, questions? We got seven minutes. Yes. What's that? The rich dad, poor dad. Sure. We'll get it for you here in just a minute. Next, over here. I'm sorry, talk louder. I'm old. Oh, my business card. I have one, but I don't have enough for everybody in the class. No, I'll give you a card. You let everybody else take pictures of it. Yes, because you ask, because there aren't enough to go around. So you ask, so you're going to get one. Next. <laughs> so like, I seen people like actually don't go to college, but they read books and then, and like, I heard that most people that go to college can't get a job most of the time. Well, I think that's a little too general to say that people that go to college don't get a job. But I think it's fair to say that a lot of people that go to college don't get a job making as much money as they had hoped for, and certainly not enough to pay the debt. Is that a fair statement, you think? Yeah, absolutely. So, but I don't think that means you shouldn't go to college. But regardless of whether you go to college or not, use the presentation, work your ass off, save your money, and be thinking about what kind of business you're going to start, if that's what you want to do. Okay? What should people major in? What do you recommend as a major for college? Oh, I guess it's a cop-out, but people should major in business, I guess. Someone else? I buy commercial, and I buy, I love small businesses. Small businesses is mom and pops. It's garages, it's cabinet shops, it's plumbers, it's small service businesses. They rent typically 2,000 to 2,500 square feet. Uh, it's, it's considered white hot, white meaning the hottest of hot right now in the real estate market because there's not enough warehouses and too many people are opening businesses, especially in Dallas-Fort Worth. And with Amazon building big warehouses, all those big warehouses need lots of little companies to support them, so on and so on. And I'm proud to say that in my business career, I've never laid anybody off or never had a setback because it seems like there's always another mom and pop to rent a building. I don't buy big boxes. And I believe in 10 years, when we look up, Best Buy is not going to be here. All those big boxes are going to be gone. Even today, you don't buy anything at Best Buy. You go over there and look, and then you go home and order it. Next. Sounds like we got everybody. So like, um, as of right now, what kind of, me and we, we as a team from Huntsville are kind of making a business right now. Uh, we have a product, we have everything done kind of. But like, what if I wanted to create like another business, like another business with another product? Do you think I should only like focus on one? I think you have to focus on one if you're like gonna be successful. Focusing on like two or three. Yeah, put the other one on the shelf for a moment, especially if you're gonna have partners. The other thing I see about younger people that start businesses with partners is they don't lay out the groundwork in the beginning about who's going to work and how the money's going to be divided. And so 18 months in, everybody's getting a divorce, okay, which wasn't really good for anybody. So I'm going, and those talks are kind of hard about, well, you're going to have to do this, but I'm going to do that. Or I'm going to take half the money and you're only going to get a quarter of the money. You need to have those up front. So, but I would encourage you to go leave this room and as soon as you can get on Amazon, type in how to build a business plan and buy the best selling book that's there for how to buy a business plan, how to build a business plan. Okay. How'd you know I owned that? Did you say you knew I owned one? Oh, you said rental company. I used to rent exotic cars, like Lamborghinis and Ferraris. I had 56 of them, and I lost my ass. It's good to lose sometimes, because when you're an entrepreneur and you have success and success and success, 
Sometimes you need to get your teeth in your throat, okay? Because you get to thinking your crap don't stink and everything you do turns to gold. So it's good to lose money. So but back to your question. Did I answer your question? How did you rent the second one? How did you rent the second one after you had the first one? Well, I put up a website for renting cars and started renting them. But it was a dismal failure. I was only in it for two years and lost a million dollars. Well, I tell my lawyer, I, lo I wanted to be a lawyer so bad, but I hated school. You can't be a lawyer unless you like school, okay? And I tease him because I say, you know, I don't think I really want to swap garages with you, okay? Uh, and so I think you should always go to, go to college. That's it. Thanks, kids. <laughs>